Today I would like to show you uh, how to use uh, GHGL, which is a new function on Grasshopper to write a shader, shader language on Grasshopper to actually create your own shader. And for a material, I would like to choose this matcap shader as a starting point because it's pretty easy but creates pretty rich um, outlook like these just preparing those this kind of sphere um, textures textures with spheres uh, written on it you can just create whole kinds of rich um, outlook for the meshes so let's try to make that and that will this will be pretty easy to start to do uh, first of all you need to have your GHGL uh, installed on your Rhino and probably you need a latest Rhino work in progress version which right now I'm using a what does it say hmm. not sure where the version is written somewhere right here 7.0.20098 something and you also need to install your GHGL package from the package manager if you open a package manager with a command you can install your um, function or plugin in order to use the GHGL and if you search for GHGL, you see this this one. And the latest version that I'm using right now is 7.0.4. So that's the latest version. Okay, now once you have installed and restart your uh, Grasshopper, you should see your shaders somewhere in the component where was it this one okay here on the display sub menu there's a tab called preview and you see gl mesh shader and gl shader and gl shader is for um drawing like points and lines and meshes or on the screen on and GL mesh shader is to to create a shader for the meshes and today I'm gonna use this GL mesh shader in order to turn the look of the meshes or could also be used for V-reps okay so first I am going to create some like um, base geometry in order to use it for the shader so let's make it simple just create some twisting geometry like everybody loves to make so starting from the s polygon then maybe use the range to create some uh, series and then move this uh, polygon upward to the Z direction and then do some rotation for each of them with the maybe a multiplication of angles multiply by the range as well so that they will be seri series right and then maybe I might also want to change the scale as well and the scale could be more interesting using a graph mapper probably so I'll connect this with the range make the graph type to something like sine then make it com connect it to an F and then connect the base geometry to G then the center is 
default is okay and then let's change this to something sh some shape looking like a Okay, I might just want to change the X and Y scale, so I'll, do, I'll use this one instead. And X and Y. Okay, and then let's try to change some scales here. Making like a pot. Then finally, use the loft to create the geometry like this right that looks okay not that bad and then maybe some um, number of series or range here oops not this one to the end maybe it doesn't matter Okay, well, this is good enough for testing the shape, I mean the shader, so let's do that. Let's do with this. Okay, now, in order to use the shader first for the meshes or these, this kind of uh, geometry, like B reps, what I could do is this mesh. GL mesh shader. So let's bring this up. And in order to create a matcap shader, you need to have an image or textures in order to create a matcap. So just search for matcap on a Google image or something, then download like any kind of textures looking looking like this that you have a sphere on the square image like these and just download any of them and we're gonna use those as a base textures so I have a bunch of those textures downloaded on the desktop okay now in order to use the texture first I am going to create an input in order to uh, load the texture, so I'm gonna name this could be any name, I'm just gonna name it U texture, and then use the file path to load the path to the image that you have downloaded okay, any of them, maybe I'll start with the, this kind of red plastic one, okay now the preparation is okay. Now I'm going to write uh, actual shader coding here. So the shader is written in GLSL, which is in a language for OpenGL. And I am not getting into the detail of this uh, OpenGL shading language because I am not that. Um, I'm, I have just began yeah, writing this, so I don't know much about it but I think I can, the matcap shader is easy enough for me to tell you how to create it. Okay, so you have three types of shaders. One is vertex, geometry, and fragment. I don't know much about geometry, but uh, basically you use vertex and fragment uh, communicating each other to create a shader, which uh, shader to preview the meshes for this one and right now the as a default you have some diffuse uh, shader written on it written on the component to draw this kind of uh, magenta looking uh, preview but uh, I am going to modify it so that I can load the textures and you create a matcap shader that we want Okay, first of all, go to the vertex shader, and what I am going to do is to <coughs> uh, bring up some uh, necessary information in order to use it for creating a matcap shader. Now, uh, first of all, I need a texture coordinate for the meshes, so in order to bring out the texture coordinate, 
I can look into some built-in uniform or attribute and bring up the mesh, mesh texture coordinate so that I don't have to write anything in order to read it. So <clears throat> this is the max texture coordinate for this meshes. And for, uh, another one that I would need is a function in order to transfer the mesh normal. In this case, this mesh in each vertices of this uh, vrep or mesh, which vrep is uh, going to be converted into mesh in order to use as a in order to use it for the shader. So each uh, geometry would have tons of vertices in order to use it for um, control the vertex back vertex control and and uh, control the colors. <coughs> And so each vertice also has the normal information. So I um I need to get that normal information, which is here already have the mesh normal here. But I also need to convert this uh, normal into a camera normal. <coughs> Currently, this is a world normal information. But in order to use, in order to create a matcap shader, you need to have you need to convert this world normal, a mesh normal, into a camera normal. So you need to have a matrix which converts this world normal into a camera normal, which can be find that somewhere around here, I think, uh, which one was disturbed. Okay, I think this one, world to camera normal. So this is the function in order to convert the world normal into a camera normal. So bring that up. This is a matrix three. So I am I need this to convert this normal into a camera normal. So and in order to bring this into a fragment shader, I need to write some vec uh, three. Uh, var varying attribute here. I am going to name this V normal. And V normal is going to be calculated using this world to camera normal multiplied by a normal, which is the mesh normal. And then this is going to be the camera normal for this mesh. Okay, now <clears throat> uh, another one you need is the texture coordinate. I'll put it for a fragment shader, so I'm just gonna name this text chord. And for this one I am going to just pass this uh, mesh texture coordinate as it is. You don't need to change anything for this one. So everything is done here. Go back, to, uh, go to the fragment shader, and let's write some uh, stuff for the matcap. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna delete all the <coughs> uh, code before the fragment color, and just keep those fragment color equal vec four. And let's try to see if this one works. Okay. So the fragment color or fragment shader works uh, uh, like by replacing the fragment color with the vector four, which is R, G, B, and alpha. Currently, I just set it as a red with alpha one. So I, I'm having this kind of matte, totally uh, unshaded red. Stuff. If I turned alpha to 0.5, I might have some transparency here as well. But that's not what we want today. What we want is to first load the texture and use it uh, for the matcap. Now, uh, in order to uh, create a load of textures, first I am going. I have to write a 
uniform sampler 2d and new texture which is the same name as this input here so you have uh, inputted the path to the image and then then write a uniform sampler 2d u texture and this will convert the the path into a sampler 2d texture right and also you need to bring up some information from the vertex well, first one is a texture coordinate so text chord and another one is the camera normal so back three can v normal right and that think that's the information we need and then first thing you might want to do is to normalize the camera normal since the currently the normal is in the range between minus one to one <clears throat> but in order to use it for the textures uh, simply what you need to do now is that what you are going to do is that use the normal information and map it into a UV information so that you can um, reference into the texture like these. So say you have a coordinates like 0, 0 here and this is 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 here. Then <coughs> using the camera normal, if the mesh is facing downward, then the normal the position of the normal should be around here. If the mesh is facing upward, then the position of the normal, which it will be converted into the UV, should be around here. So like 0 0.5 to 0.5 X or U will be 0.5, VV will be close to 1.0 or something like that. But currently the UV that you got from converted from the mesh vertex mesh, mesh normal into the camera normal is the range in between minus one to one then you, which is over around here starting from here to here so you need to map it into zero one so that all the normal that you get from the camera normal is referencing somewhere in this texture right so <coughs> It, that is not that hard to do. Just create, uh, just uh, multiply this normal, which is in the range between minus one to one. Multiply by 0 0.5 and edit 0.5 again. Okay. And I have also extracted only X and Y uh, because I'm I just need a 2D information. And currently, the normal that you have got from the vertex shader is a vector three. Even though the this is the camera normal, so this is projected into 2D from the 3D, but you just uh just want to access into the X and Y which is going to be converted into U and V so I'm writing like this All right now I have U and V and seems like I also need to flip the V part the v, which uh, this one which is the Y coordinate of the textures uh, flipped like vertically because it's facing up and down uh, like up and down on the opposite side opposite direction so i'm going to multiply this y by no no i'm going to subtract this by one so that it will be flipped okay now i am ready to reference the texture using texture 2d using reference the texture that you have imported with this uv that you have created and seems a bit off uh, let's look 
check that again. Okay, do I have everything? Let's try loading some other textures. Okay, now it looks okay. Now, I think it's working. Let's load up the, the red one again. Yeah, yeah, working great. Another one. Looks great. Now let's try with the other geometry like sphere, like more simple stuff like sphere. Let's see how it goes. And let's also check the direction of the light if it's facing uh, correctly. Okay, now the sphere is pretty easy to um, debug the texture that you have imported because it's gonna it should be it should look identical to the texture so this is the texture that I'm looking at right now and this is the result and uh, it looks exactly the same so I think I have implemented correctly if I change this to something else that also looks okay so even though you have changed you changed the uh, the camera position you still see the same thing so this is kind of a fake texturing or fake fake lighting technique but still creates a really rich outlook especially if you use it for uh, shapes like these more complex shape than the uh, sphere you can create pretty rich texture without using any lighting calculation or anything and that's gonna be lightweight as well that's pretty cool and let's also see another uh, other kind of stuff this also looks good I like this as well Now since this is a mesh, um, <clears throat> this is a mesh shader, so basically it is converting this sphere up into a mesh um, using this component. So providing converting to mesh first with your own like um, quality might be better sometime as a workflow, but still the same. And that's it. That's how you can create a matcap shader using JGL function from a Rhino work in progress version as a grasshopper component and there are a lot more things you can do with this once you know OpenGL shaders you can do tons of stuff using this and I might show you other stuff what you can do with it later on so today for today uh, this is it for the simple shader coding okay thank you um see you next time